No, I don't know because sometimes I write stuff like in my notebooks yeah. and sometimes I put it in my notes and I have another app that's uh-huh. like a it's like a voice recorder on my, my Apple Watch. Oh, yeah, you just... Oh, so right, I, so I talk about theory. it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah, I do that. Okay, so that's kind of like me. Oh, you have, a, you have a voice recorder too? No, like I just do it before. Like before we record, I'm like... You know how I was like kind of dozing off? Yeah. That's how I get into like the, the mental. It's like I vision you in front of me and just telling the theory. Oh, really? In my notes, <laughs> if you go, if anyone finds my notes, like it'll just be some random ass <laughs> shit. Like, <laughs> like why is a giraffe? Is it like fun? one word? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like a description, but like a little description. But like, if you find my notes, it's like the weirdest shit. And I feel like that if the more, the if you want to really get to know a person, the notes is where it's at. Cause that's, no old. That, that's that's where you find the most secret shit. Yo, okay. Do you think? <laughs> you think? Do you think if if you got like your your girlfriend or boyfriend's phone, that's the first thing you want to check? Oh yeah. Because yeah, I don't sure. even I don't even want to check text messages though. No, no, I don't. I don't think text messages because you can delete text messages. But people usually I have notes from like fucking. That's a diary, bro. Yeah, I it, know. it says that's a diary. Yeah, yeah. Because there's like because I have notes of like I I've added usernames from PS3 players in like yeah. 2000 like 16. Like oh, I can scroll down shit. on my notes. Like my last note is probably a like a username. 2016, you yeah. had it for that long. Your do iCloud. You, do you delete your notes? No, I don't think everyone deletes their no, notes. No, but I always switch my my thing because I don't think I don't think my iCloud saved my iPod stuff. Oh, was yeah. iCloud a thing? iCloud was even a yeah, thing, bro. You know what's so fire now? Because I got a new phone. Yeah. You can, you can have the iCloud and then like you like put the two phones together and then it, like it transports all. Oh, that's what I did. That's so what I fire. did. Yeah, so yeah. Before, that's smart. Before you had to put it on your computer, then transport that into your phone. Mm-hmm. Love technology, gang. What I like so much is, okay, this is a good thing and a bad thing. Okay. Because you know how you can tap your phone and just pay for shit? Okay, yeah, that's a bad thing. Do <laughs> you think it's bad or good? No, it's a, that's a bad thing. You know, I had to take that off my phone. Oh, because you spent too much? Because I spent way too much, fam. Damn. That's why, like, whenever I go out now, it's I only have, like, $20, so I can only you spend take cash, You take cash yeah, out? Yeah. I think, I forgot who it was. It might have been, like, Warren Buffett or some shit. Mm-hmm. Like, a billionaire. He said, only spend with cash because yeah. you're going to spend more if it's on if it's online. Yeah, yeah. Because if you think about it, bro, if you have, let's say, like, a huge number, think about a GTA 5, bro. Yeah. When you have that huge, big <laughs> number of like a billion yeah. whatever Cars. when you go and buy shit it and it drops money yeah if it's still a big number you can be like, okay I can, I can buy more yeah. i can buy more yeah. but realistically you should look at what you spent for that fucking day mm-hmm. right yeah do you know the the millionaire kid on tiktok that's like this is what i learned from my millionaire dad and like he's it's like everyone in the comments like yo he's getting forced to say this shit why forced no because it, it looks like he's like he has a millionaire dad yeah and he's like this is what i learned to, oh, you have to save half your half your paycheck. You, s- you don't spend that on cars. Invest in a house. Oh, so you think you think it's his dad that's like, yo, go viral on TikTok. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure, for sure. Go on TikTok. Go no, on TikTok. I don't think I don't think that kid wants to record TikToks. He's just there for the for the money. I, I think I seen that before with like kids on stage where they don't even want to be on <laughs> stage, man. Yeah, that's the worst. I think that's fucking the worst when you make your kid go mm. and do a performance and yeah. then they're like. Oh, I have to do this. <laughs> do you know the the old videos that you have, like the the choir vids when you're all singing like Christmas songs with like kindergartens? Oh, like the winter festival. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there's yeah. always that one kid that just doesn't want to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, that was me, but I just fuck around. What do you mean? Yo, yo, whenever we had those like meetings and stuff, mm-hmm. or at least like rehearsal, I think I told this story before. Like <laughs> I would make people laugh, or like I would like I would do some dumb shit to uh, like disrupt the class. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and What'd then you ruin do? the whole thing. What'd you do? I forgot what I was doing. I told this I told this before and then I got scolded, uh, remember? Yeah, yeah. And the teacher just scolded me in my face. Mm. I think for those type of reasons, I never wanted to be part of like singing, singing or stuff? choir and stuff anymore. Really? But I used to love singing. Oh yeah? I used to love singing, man. I mean, I think that's rooted in us. We're like Filipinos, so. Yeah. I think <laughs> the moment the moment you have like a karaoke night and everybody gasses you up, <laughs> yeah. then you're like, oh, maybe I can do this shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like you said, the drunk uncles, maybe you're not really that good. They're just they're super drunk. <laughs> maybe. Maybe yeah. that's why. Yeah. But it's dope if if you take that and be like, okay, I can do this now. Mm-hmm, yeah. Boom. And then they go ahead and actually do work. Mm, yeah. But yeah. here's the dilemma. Mm-hmm. Do you think having a friend that doesn't make good music or like they're really bad at making music, <laughs> yeah. how do you tell them they don't make good stuff? Oh, fuck. You know, one of my, the go-tos mm-hmm. is like, yeah, I like it. 
but I, I wouldn't listen to this on my on my own time you know really you say it that it kind of gives like a, a bad but yeah. always end it with a good mm. right i think i think that's something i learned in like kindergarten the good and bad sandwich whenever you don't you try to like you don't want to make someone mad you comp you with the with the uh criticism yeah. you add like good shit on top of like the, the bread mm -hmm. so like at the end of the day they're not thinking oh they, they think my shit sucks they're trying to they at the end of the day the last words i heard from them was yeah. good i think for me whenever whenever somebody shows me something that i don't necessarily like mm -hmm. this is what i always tell them i tell them yeah you have to prove me wrong mm -hmm. like i want you to fucking prove me wrong right now yeah like go do something to make me change my mind yeah and if, if it doesn't work out that way it didn't work out that way okay. but that's what i tell them prove me wrong rather than fucking this sucks fake love fake rather love. than yeah yeah oh this is good but blah blah, blah. Mm, yeah instead of just saying that i'll say I don't, I don't like it that much, but I want you to prove me wrong. Yeah. I think I'm too nice, bro. Like, I always say, like, sometimes I catch myself showing, like, fake love. Mm -hmm. But then at the end of the day, I'm like, fuck, that's not going to help him. Exactly. Cause, cause yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep going. But yeah, I have to get meaner, I guess. Yeah. Because I don't know how to to give criticism. Like, I'm when I give criticism, it's harsh. Like, I'll be like, oh, that shit is trash, bro. Like, that's not good criticism, yeah, that's though. That's, that's terrible say, criticism. Yeah. Because I, in my own, my own opinion, I wouldn't listen to that shit. That's, that's what I say. Mm -hmm. But I have to get better at that, you know? When I give criticism, I always give, like, what you should do. Rather than, yeah. rather than fucking saying something sucks, I'd be yeah. like... Maybe you should just try this. Mm -hmm, yeah, that's what I do. Cause like what what I what you caught about me is like oh I'm very judgmental. Like I'm like what I say I'm a pro hater. Like yeah. <laughs> like first thing I think it's social media did this to me. Mm -hmm. But like boom, if I see something I don't like in my head, I'm like yo that shit's whack, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like, is that is that with you too? Like nah, I don't I don't even do that, bro. Where? No, I I don't know. Maybe before when I was younger, like I yeah. used to think. No, nah, actually, I don't know. I never I never gave anything like a, a straight up fuck that really never <laughs> i think I, it's weird but i look at like if like a fit yeah if someone shows me a fit i'll be like oh that shit's whack in my head in my in my head maybe it's because i i dive into so many fucking genres of <laughs> of, of like people too then i always know there's a place for something everywhere mm -hmm. like let's say um look at the dog girl <laughs> for example, dog girl? you know that dog girl that pretends she's a dog and has like a fetish what yeah you never heard about her where is this on TikTok? bro she was she's been viral fam so this it's it's this dog girl <laughs> where she pretends to be a dog and like licks water from a bowl and it's what like a sexual thing right it's like a sexual thing yeah to sell her only fans but she does that fetish of like being a dog oh no i've never heard that yeah but That's in my fire. head i'm in my head i'm like she's making hell of money i'm pretty yeah. sure she, she's a millionaire oh yeah but she's specifically for that small niche mm -hmm. And as crazy as that sounds, yeah. that's still something. You know what I mean? Really? So if there's something like that, there's something for toenail clippings. Uh -huh. There's something for <laughs> okay, well, melted ice cream. You know what I mean? Like random shit. What's what's like the weirdest fetish that you that someone's like admitted to you? Weirdest fetish some somebody's admitted to me? Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't think I've heard any crazy ones. Yeah, like yeah. I heard the, I heard the, like the toe one. I've I've always heard the toe one. The like, toe one? Like a lot of people like toes. That's weird to me. I still. know. That's weird to me. Well, would you... Okay. <laughs> and th this question always comes up. Would you, like, s suck your girlfriend's toes? Or, like, your significant other's toes? Nah, that's dirty. You wouldn't? Even if, like, you're married <laughs> nah. and, like, you're in the position, like, oh, you guys are hella horny. You just do it? It just doesn't appeal to me. Or, it doesn't appeal to me. Yeah. Because there's no, like, clean feet. Is there? I don't that, know. Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> I don't know. Ask the Nickelodeon if you guy. wash, If you wash your feet, I guess. Yeah. But you wouldn't? Okay, are are your feet cleaner than your hands? Are oh, it's a good question. That's a good question. Are our feet cleaner than our hands? I think no. I think our hands are dirtier. Why do you think that? I think our hands are dirtier because we touch everything with our hands. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say because we wear socks everywhere we go and shoes, so they're kind of protected. But is it because we keep the foot in a in a enclosed in, spot yeah. for very long? Yeah, but at the Does same that time, that can, that can be dirty too. Because sweat, athlete's foot. Hmm. People have athlete's foot. It gets girls down there. The Maybe because mold. we wash our hands more than our feet, then it becomes cleaner. True. Yeah, I guess. Maybe you just have dirty ass socks then. <laughs> like, it's, it's a problem. That's a red flag too. Like, you can't have dirty feet, fam. Like dirty the feet. No, like, when the feet is actually, like, black. Like, charcoal black. My, my feet get like that if I work out, like, training. R really? Yeah, and bro. Because when I'm doing Muay Thai. Oh, you're bare feet, bare feet. Barefoot, and, yeah. and it, it rubs on the thing. Okay. And I'm not going to lie. It's like, um... Mm. It's like leather now, bro. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, my shit's like leather, really? bro. Yeah. No, but I think um my hands got rougher just because you know when you punch the bag, yeah. You know your technique is off 
when like your skin rips. You know that when your skin rips, yeah, because really? that means you're you're punching, but you're dragging it down a bit, punching and dragging it down. That's why on your knuckles, if you guys ever punch a punching bag, you just punch it straight and cock right back, because mm. that means there's no skin in the there's no rips. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I, didn't, I didn't really bag that. Yeah. yeah. Cause I used to get it all the time, but I used to only get it, I think, right here on the on the last knuckle. Oh, yeah? On the last knuckle. And this is always when I didn't wrap up. Mm. So we always wrap up. Yeah. Insects. We wrap up. Wrap up. <laughs> <laughs> nah, and then I think over time, it like, it healed mm -hmm. and I don't get cut there no more. It's like, it's like reinforced. Okay. You know yeah, I mean? yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> so time to clear that winter bush and join 4 million other men that trust Manscaped with their delicates. The Performance Package 4.0 is the only thing you need this season to keep your boys looking fresh for your partner and smelling like tulips. So to start off your spring cleaning, use the Manscaped 4.0 trimmer to get the most precise shave on your hedges. So the Performance Package 4.0 also comes with the Crop Preserver. I personally use this to keep my balls smelling nice and fresh. And yo, honestly, I can just smell this as cologne, man. Yeah. Like, this Facts. smells good. Facts. So the start of the spring is also the start of Testicular Cancer Awareness Month in April. Mm. Manscaped has partnered with Testicular Cancer Society to bring awareness to testicular cancer, men's health, and early cancer detection. Manscaped is committed to raising awareness for the most common form of cancer in men age 15 to 35. And by giving support for fighters, survivors, and families impacted by testicular cancer, as part of their We Save Balls initiative. So get 20% off plus free shipping with the code JUMPERS, J-U-M-P-E-R-S, and go to manscaped.com. So it's time to throw out your old habits and upgrade your hygiene life. The link will be down below in the description. Make sure to click it. Okay, <laughs> yeah, okay back to the back to your like story of like interesting people. Mm -hmm. Who was like the most interesting person you've ever spoke to? Most interesting person I ever spoke to. Yeah, mm. like, like, oh, that co or that conversation was just like outright, like, oh shit, like I'll remember that forever. I think one of my favorites I always have mm -hmm. is with my dentist. I I talked about him before. Okay, what'd you guys talk about? So, so this is really like I think second month of the podcast, second mm, okay. month of the podcast, and I told him what I was doing, right? Yeah, yeah. And he he told me everything I wanted to hear, but he told it in a way where it's like you should have been known this. You get me? Okay. So he told me, yo, he drops gems, man. Yeah. Yo, I don't know. Something about my dentist, he just drops <laughs> gems. I think it's because he also owns the the actual oh, the actual CEO? building. Yeah. Yeah, he owns all of that. Mm -hmm. So he's the like big boss. Yeah. But he's like more uh, hands-on, so he's still there. Yeah, yeah. So he told me these gems. I said this before on a on an older episode, one of the first episodes, yeah. where he said, This really stuck with me. Mm -hmm. Rather than rather than buying more things, rather than buying like a, a bigger house, buying more clothes, buying all this materialistic things, he said, what you want to buy is buy things that give you more time. Buy things that give you more time. Facts. Remember I said that? Yeah, yeah. So what does that mean? Mm -hmm. Let's say, let's say I have a job which requires five hours of my time to do something, mm -hmm. right? Boom. Mm -hmm. Instead of buying, let's say, a vacation away from it yeah buy somebody to do that work mm. and give you time to do other things yeah no that's facts right that's facts so now that you have that free time because time is one thing mm -hmm. that no rich person can really buy unless yeah. they buy through doing those things mm -hmm. yeah. right because one thing we don't ever get is time yeah you don't get time back bro mm-hmm that's facts. Like there's no there's no value of time where you can just like let me let me refund, let me refund. Mm, that shit's yeah. gone. I know. That's why you gotta live in the moment, fam. Mm. Always. So once you have that time, once you have like free time to do, mm -hmm. then you can spend it on whatever you want. Spend it with family. Yeah. Spend it on a side hustle. Spend mm -hmm. it on your actual passions. Yeah. And there you go. Yeah, that's true. I think I think the one of the most it wasn't from a CEO that was like the most interesting conversation. It was from a guy that I met in Toronto playing basketball with right yeah, yeah shout out moses i don't know if you're still watching this mm -hmm. but he we just had like this conversation when we were waiting to play pickup right yeah and he was like yo uh i know you from somewhere you look mad familiar right mm -hmm. and i'm like nah i don't do anything if you ever see me in public i, I always say that if, if you think you recognize me i'll say nah i don't do anything yeah because I, <laughs> I, I don't want to talk about the podcast <laughs> so yeah. he's like nah i seen you on my tiktok fam like i seen you on the tiktok he's like you and carlos are mad inspirational mm -hmm. and then he told me his story yeah he's like yo fam like i was homeless like um uh, when I was a kid, like my mom left me and shit, like, and I was just homeless. And we went to the convenience store, right? Mm -hmm. And I picked up a honey bun and Gatorade. He's like, "Yo, one day, fam, th th like this was my lunch, mm -hmm. this was my breakfast, and shit like that." So that conversation just made me like mad appreciative, like what we can do. He's like, "Yo, fam, I watched your podcast, fam, mm -hmm. and it's like super inspirational. Made me get off my feet." 
That's good. That's good because yeah. I always try to leave that shit yeah, out for yeah. y'all. Like, but that ass, this like this is a kid younger than me too. That's and he's like he's like fam. When I didn't have like I didn't have like a home, mm-hmm. I used to just play here for hours. Just mm-hmm. me and a basketball. That's all I needed yeah. to be happy. And I'm like, oh fuck. And what what means a lot to me is when these people in those situations, like mm-hmm. I may have, because I would have never known. Yeah, feel me. Mm-hmm. And there's so much other people that are in hard situations yeah. that need somebody to to yeah. tell them something. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And I'm glad I can be that, or at least we can leave that for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause that's, that's very powerful stuff, bro. Yeah. That's very powerful stuff, especially if it impacts their life positive, mm-hmm. yeah. positively. Yeah. And for all the negative thinkers, man, you know how something bad like, or small might happen in the day. Yeah. It might just be a, a bad day, but like, it's not a bad life. You don't have a bad life. You still go home to a house. You still go home to a bed. Right. So mm-hmm. don't let that little thing impact your whole day. Do you, do you think you ever had like a super bad day? Yeah. We all have those. I feel like. Do you remember like a specific bad a day specific though? Specific bad day. Mm. I want to get too deep, but like probably when my when I see my dad uh, crying downstairs, and then I was like, "Oh, what happened?" And then like, "Oh, your grandma passed away." Oh, that was my yeah, bad day. Yeah, yeah. Like I couldn't think about anything, and then I remember specifically like I was in my I don't know my grandpa was in my room, mm. and I just hugged him for a bit. And I'm like, "Fuck, man, like, mm. this shit is trash." Yeah. Yeah. How about you? I think for me, what's hard is like I'd have bad days, but mm-hmm. I really try and forget them. Mm-hmm. And in a sense, like I lose that memory. You lose it. But do you think do you think it's bad to forget the bad? Do you think you have to remember? Yeah, you always have to remember. Because mm-hmm. I also when whenever I think like, oh, my grandma's always watching down on me. Yeah. So I got to push for her. Or if I know a lot of uh, people have people that passed away, mm-hmm. they do everything they do now for them. You feel me? Yeah, only, yeah, yeah. It's like a source of motivation. Yeah, one big reason why I didn't drop out of uh, university mm-hmm. is because, like, my grandma always wanted me to to complete university. That's a big reason why I'm doing it right now, mm-hmm. you know? And I'm going to complete it. That's good. Yeah. That's good. I think it's always good, especially when you have, like, somebody you have to work for. Yeah. You know what I mean? Not, like, necessarily, like, work for, but they're your inspiration to mm-hmm. do it. Yeah. Like, I'm doing this for them. I'm doing this for them. I'm doing this for them. Yeah. Then it's more so much stronger because mm-hmm. sometimes yourself, if you're maybe you're not so believed in yourself, mm-hmm. then it's good to look at somebody else for that. Are you doing this for you? You're doing this for your family? What are you doing it for? I always do it for myself, man. As yeah. selfish as that sounds, I always do it for myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because at the end, it's, uh, at the end of the day, it is your legacy, right? Is yeah. that what you want to do? Yeah. And it's not to say that I, I don't do it for them too. Yeah. yeah. It's not to say that. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, I always believe like, Anything I do, I'm doing it for what I want. Yeah. You know I me? Mean? Mm-hmm. And that's a selfish way sometimes, bro. Mm-hmm. People will might think of that way. I think sometimes that's a selfish way to look at it. Yeah. But okay. I don't know. Most, would you say most entrepreneurs are selfish? Most entrepreneurs are selfish. Hmm. Yeah, I would think In a that. sense, yeah, kind of, right? Yeah, kind of. In a sense, kind of. Mm-hmm. Even if you think about like, damn, it's tough though. Because there's a lot of people that give back. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying I wouldn't give back. I yeah, would yeah. want to give back. You do back. a lot. You yeah. do a lot for our community. So. I would always want to give back, but yeah. But the the fact of like um your career, mm-hmm. I think that's one thing I'm super selfish with is like this is my this is my plan. This is my my journey, mm-hmm. and people that get in front of it, I don't care about their feelings. Really? Yeah. That's how you think. If if somebody's stopping me, <clears throat> so, somebody's stopping me, not necessarily like in the way. Yeah. Stopping you. Yeah. Forget about what they care about. Yeah. Yeah. Because you can't let that stop you. <laughs> yeah. I had to do that recently. I, I'm on my Gary V. Or no, who who doesn't read comments that you said? Gary V. Yeah. yeah Gary V. Yeah. I, I stopped reading comments because a lot of it's good. Majority of it's good. But like the one comment, I felt like, I don't know why, but it's like one comment would hit me more than all the, the 3,000 positive comments. Really? So I really had to look myself in the, the mirror like, yo, bro, what's wrong with you? Like, hella people love you. Don't worry yeah. about that shit. But then I just stopped reading comments in, in general. Mm. Yeah. I think that's tough for the people that can't take it, especially look at like Dixie D'Amelio. Oh, yeah. Yo, that's tough for her, that's man. Too much, yeah. That's so tough for her, especially because if she's that, that type of person to take mm. it personally and she has that much people looking yeah. at her. Yeah. It's can fun. you ever escape? Do you think you can ever escape? Mm, the root? No. Once you're in social media, you're in it forever. Mm. I feel like. Oh, shit. You think? Yeah, yes. You think that? I think you can disappear, bro. No, you can't. I think you can disappear. Yeah, but when you disappear, everyone's going to be like, oh, where did she go? Where did she go? She fell off. She fell off. No, but you that that's that's worth it, no? Is it? Okay, I have a great story for you. I have a great okay. story for you. Listen. Okay. So I think the movie was a Bronx Tale. You ever watch that movie? No. It's a mafia movie, right? Okay. So anyways, 
this guy, mm-hmm. he was he was a younger guy, and he was talking to one of the the mob leaders. Okay, and he was like, "Yo, I'm looking, I'm looking for Frankie. He owes me twenty dollars. Like, fuck mm-hmm. Frankie, fuck Frankie, blah blah, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then what the mob boss said is, "Okay, do you care about this guy? Mm. What do you think he said? No, he said no, right? Yeah. No. And then he said, "Okay, look at it like this. Look at the silver lining. You got rid of somebody you don't like for twenty dollars. You got off cheap." Yeah, true. He'll never, he'll never come back to you. He'll never be in your <laughs> life again for $20. Mm, That's true. a win. Yeah. So I think just the way you look at it, mm-hmm. just the way you look at certain situations and just the way you look at those negative people, mm-hmm. you can switch it into a way you want. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can use certain things as a positive if you look at it that way. Mm. Have you ever reconciled with like an enemy like that? Reconciled with an enemy? Yeah, like I don't have much Con- enemies. Connie or Drake shit. I don't. I don't have enemies. At least I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know of. True, true, you know true. Me? But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think. Do you think having an enemy is a good thing? Enemy is a good thing. I think it's a good thing. Yeah, I mean, you know, me, me for sure. Because like I always like before this, I will always be on my revenge stuff. Mm-hmm. So if I have some good motivation, that's how you know. Like I'm, I'm on my best performance. Yeah. Like whenever somebody's watching me in a basketball game that I don't like, yeah, I'm gonna perform. You feel me? That's mm. why it's like whenever someone has a good episode, yeah, I'm a perform. That's how I. That's yeah. the me specifically. Yeah. yeah. You know so, I mean? so you say something like that, and then in my head, this is what I think about. Oh, I think right. about dog. Do you think? Do you think Putin has that same like chip on his shoulder where pe- when people don't take him seriously or don't perceive mm-hmm. him at the way he wants, yeah, then he takes it to extreme levels because he's in that place of power. Probably he's probably ego, big egotistical person right yeah and you have to be an ego like ego guy to be running for president like look at trump look that's at true they're all that's they're true bro themselves. yeah they're full of themselves. okay do you think oh man yeah, yeah okay <laughs> never i don't want to get into the war but like yeah yeah are you preparing for the worst am i preparing for the worst you know what's crazy too yeah last episode you said is there going to be a nuclear war you didn't knock on wood and nelk had a podcast with trump with trump and they were like, oh, like, is nuclear war going to be a thing? Mm. And then Trump's like, it, it's like, it's a possibility. Like, you No, can't that's a say, real possibility. Yeah, it's No, fucked, that shit's man. real, fam. It's fucked, That shit is a real possibility. Like, yeah. let's, let's, let's hope that shit never happens. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But honestly, I'm looking at these YouTube channels. Shout out Canadian Prepper, because I watched his video last oh. night. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yo, he's, he's, he, everybody's collecting, like, um, what do you call it? MREs. Yeah. Everybody's collecting, like, solar panels. Uh. Bro, I was on Amazon last night. Should mm-hmm. I spend five racks on solar panels and a, and a, <laughs> and a battery? Yo. Nah. Because if, if, you, if you think about it, mm-hmm. That's like really valuable, bro. That's going to be more valuable than anything else. Yeah. Money won't even matter, bro. I know. Then then what's the point, fam? Like, why are you worrying about things that like we can't control? Like, just go out the way you're supposed to go out, I guess. Well, it depends on, on who you are, right? Yeah. It depends on who you are. If, if, if you have means to survive, no matter yeah. what, then you have means to survive. Like, if, if a nuclear strike means... Uh, obliteration of everybody like yeah, boom then, yeah then what's the point then it doesn't matter then yeah. it doesn't matter i'm saying it doesn't matter yeah, yeah but if it's if it's the point where like strong people can survive and you can uh-huh. still live on and remember okay then we need those people to remember mankind bro yeah no because i always remember there's always like movies and like these doomsday preppers yeah who are like okay i'm gonna live in a cave and have this hazmat suit but and then go out and get food okay you're living in a cave for like what three four months everything's demolished there's nothing to live for no more like well, why are you trying to stay alive why what would your reason be honestly bro to, to, to get in the history books but there may not be no more history books because everything's demolished okay this mm-hmm. is this is how i see it and hopefully some other people see it like this okay is if you're if you're content yeah. if you're content with life or you're, if you're content with who you are and what you want to do mm-hmm. and you don't see this from stopping you like obviously it's gonna change a lot of things yeah. but if you want to survive and live on mm-hmm. bro do it yeah you know I me mean? i think that's yeah. what it is for me yeah. is like if you want to if you want to be there and and live longer just to see just to experience and just to fam live life i think in my opinion yeah because I don't want to lose one second of life. Yeah. That's that's just the way I look at it, though. Real shit. That's just the way I look at it. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't never want to give up my life just for that. Yeah. Like, I, why would I do that? Yeah. Why would I do that? That's true. If there's, I, if there's a chance for me to fight mm-hmm. and still be alive, I'll do it. Mm-hmm. Would you say you have, like, a, a fuck it personality? Or, like, what, what's your personality like? 
You know my personality. I know, that's true. <laughs> you know my personality. What do you think? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like, yeah, you you would be like, if I said, oh, let's go uh, zip lining. Or yeah. no, like, f- what do you call that? Like, uh, out the airplane? Uh, skydiving? Skydiving? Yeah, skydiving. skydiving. You would be like, yeah, fuck it, let's go. Yeah. that's. I think that's why we, like, work out. Because I'm... My main thing is like vibes and inshallah, right? Mm-hmm. Fuck it, let's let's try. You only live once. Yeah, 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 exactly. So I think, yo, okay, okay. If, if you see nukes dropping right <laughs> now, what's the last thing that's on your mind? What's the last thing on my mind? Fuck. Mm. I don't know. Wait, you, you. The la- what's the last thing on your mind, bro? <laughs> <laughs> oh no this will tell me your personality just this question alone will tell me your personality i didn't get to travel enough so regrets yeah <laughs> okay okay yeah so i don't know this is just me this uh-huh. is just me maybe i'm fucking weird mm-hmm. but but i thought of this a lot right i Wait, thought of this a lot <laughs> okay. and and I, ca- I came to the conclusion uh-huh. that it depends how I'm feeling that day still. <laughs> yeah, it probably would. It depends how I'm feeling <laughs> that day. Like if I'm feeling like kind of, kind of, kind of lazy, like I'm yeah. like, ah, oh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but if I'm feeling, if I'm feeling like super, super motivated yeah, or super yeah. like, um, we're, we're here for a purpose. Yeah. Then I'm going to be like, yo, where's the, <laughs> where's the bunker? I'm going to be running last second yeah, to anything yeah. I can see. Right. Mm-hmm. But it just matters like to me, yeah. how I'm feeling. Maybe maybe I'm feeling a little 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 lazy that day. I'm I'm just gonna <laughs> lie down, like watch uh, the sunset, you know? Yeah. Okay, that's true. Cause I remember <laughs> there was a there was a tornado warning, like a, a big tornado warning. Yeah. I don't know if you remember this, but we were super small when this happened. Mm-hmm. And we actually had to go like downstairs because it was actually that bad. And like the only thing that was I was thinking of the whole time was like, yo, I don't wanna die just with my family. I wanna die with like a bunch of friends around me. Like that was my first thing. It's oh, like, really? Like, yeah. Fuck, I want my family, my cousins around me. Like, right now. I don't want to die just like, just like this. Like, mm. I want everyone to be happy together. You know? See, I see it different, bro. Why? I what see it different, man. You're like, take me. No, 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 no. Okay, this is this is like kind of a deep look at it. Mm-hmm. But I want to see if anybody agrees with me. Okay. Would you? Do you? So you would rather die with everybody and see everybody, right? Yeah, and see anyone. I think I'm the opposite. I think I would want to die alone. Oh, what the fuck? Why? No, like alone in, in the sense of I don't see everybody sad. I don't see everybody scared. I don't see everybody in terror. Mm. Like I want the last memory of everybody I love to be something happy. Like I don't yeah. want the last memory of everybody I love to be like, we're going to die. Mm, okay, I can see that. So as I'm reminiscing, I'm yeah. thinking of the good times that I had with everybody already. Oh. Rather than the moment you're in the present and the present is fucked. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay, yeah. Because uh, usually when I, what well, it was in my head, yeah. I was like, oh, you get to see them for the last time. And then while you guys are dying, you, you're you thinking of like, damn, we're having, <laughs> like, remember that time? That time, yeah, the yeah. boom. No, but, get taken away. <laughs> but knowing the people I know, they're probably going to be stressed the fuck out and it's going to mess me up because I have anxiety, bro. Oh, and if, yeah. if I see you in the corner like this, like, I'm going to be freaking out, man. I'm going to be yeah. freaking out. I'd rather just, just do this one on my ones, yeah, bro. Yeah, that is true. Because whenever I, whenever, like, um, I'm about to come over, you always text me. Like, I don't know why you do this. What? But it's like, oh, you're on your way. But you know I'm on my way already. Like, can you chill? Like, No, you take long, bro. <laughs> no, because for me, for me, yeah. whenever somebody, look, like, because okay. you said, what? You said, like, 2 o'clock? Yeah. Or something. So I'm ready at two, bro. I'm ready at two. Whenever somebody gives me a time, bro, yeah, yeah. I'm ready for exact moment. But like, obviously, I leave some leeway. Yeah, yeah. But until until like <laughs> all those extra minutes in between until they come. Yeah. I'm like dancing around the house. Mm. I'm like I'm like walking back and forth. I have nothing to do. Yeah. I'm not going on my phone because I don't know. I, I just don't like being on my phone. True. I took a nap because I needed to take a nap to, to relax <laughs> to myself. Relax. To relax myself, okay. bro. Honestly, yeah. I think I think the worst, the worst, most uncomfortable position I could be in yeah. is like waiting long for an interview or some shit. Oh, that that that's the worst. <laughs> yeah, I think that will that'll fuck me bro, up. Oh, bro, you start running scenarios through your head. Yeah. So once you start like uh when you're waiting in that waiting room, you're mm-hmm. like, fuck, what if I mess this up? How do I say hello to him? Mm. What's a good like handshake to give him, you know? Yeah, yeah. But when yeah. you just throw it in, you just go off natural instinct and yeah. what you know. So I think that's better. So any any moment where you're leading up or waiting, yeah. fucking going on going on um a water slide yeah. or going to a roller coaster and leading up, like walking up the mm-hmm. stairs and yeah. shit, that scares me the most, man. Yeah. yeah. That scares me the most out of anything. Mm-hmm. Also, Shit like oh um I'm I'm on my way to a to a meeting or like an interview and yeah. then I'm in the elevator and like alone oh yeah thinking just in your okay, thought okay okay and you can hear your heartbeat yeah yeah 
that's what anxiety feels like for y'all that yeah. don't have it. That, that's why there was um I think there was a video where they put a guy in a in a dark room for at least like 14 minutes and he couldn't survive. Like if you're in a room all black, just your thoughts, you're not making it out. Mm. And they said like, oh yeah, people in the comments were like, yeah, I can definitely do that for a year. No, you won't. Even if they give you food and you're just alone, you're not surviving that. No phone, no interaction. Yeah, you go insane. Yeah, you'll go insane. I would go insane, yeah, bro. Yeah, exactly. Unless I fall asleep. <laughs> you, but you can't nap for a year. Bro. You, you can't just write like a, a animal. You can't go into hibernation. Well, you, you heard that guy that got trapped in the, um, the, the, the cruise ship or some shit? He yeah. got trapped in a cruise ship, I think, for three days in total darkness yeah, in yeah. water. Oh, okay. Underwater, man. He, fucking, he survived in like an air pocket nah, in the, in the cruise ship. Was he fucking sleeping? Just like, chilling the whole time? No, he got trapped there because everybody thought um, everybody died. Oh. So they were just checking the wreckage out. Yeah, and he's like, oh, I'm And the scuba, the scuba divers like entered this air pocket and like, yeah. yo, there's a guy here. <laughs> There's a guy here and you yeah. surviving off like whatever. I think he's, he landed in the kitchen. So there's like food and shit. There. Yeah, yeah. We survived, man. True. You so, know, all right, bro. Summer's mm -hmm. coming up. Are yep. you ready to look nice on the beach? I'm ready, but I'm not ready at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you doing to work out and get your body right for the summer? Right now, I really don't have a like routine. It's just treadmill run and then a push up sit-ups. That's all I'm really doing. Mm. So but you're I missing need, that, that I routine, need, yeah, right? I need like a, f like a scheduled routine. So shout out to our sponsor, Fitbot yes, sir. got you covered. So as you know, small progress mm -hmm. brings up exponentially as you go throughout your routine. Yep. And, and Fitbot has a one of a kind algorithm mm. to specify specific needs in your body so you can reach your fitness goals. Okay, so my main goal is abs. So they got stuff for that? Yeah, of course. So you guys, to you guys get to access your personalized routine on the easy to use app and start making progress wherever you guys are. It's like having a personal trainer 24 seven. So not only does Fitbot give you an exercise routine, but it also tracks your progress and muscle recovery. <clears throat> so it balances out your workout with different muscle groups so you avoid overworking certain muscles. So Fitbot just recently introduced a brand new app interface that's really easy to use and even has brand new HD video tutorials so learning new workouts are a breeze. So build, so build your fitness habit and become a better version of yourself with Fitbot. So get 25% off your subscription or try out the app for free when you sign up at fitbot.me slash jumpers. So that's 25% off your subscription if you sign up today at fitbot.me slash jumpers J-U-M-P-E-R-S. The link will be down low in the description make sure to click it Bye. you know i found out you have a dog right yeah so the way your dog sleep can tell you about his like his personality the way my dog sleeps yeah and like it kind of gives off a signal it's like this is what he wants from you the, from the way he sleeps oh okay yeah. okay so if he's ever sleeping cuddled in like that ball Oh, like a like a croissant. Yeah, like a Yo, croissant. Yeah, yeah, I always call it like a cinnabon. Really? That, that's I, whenever I see my dog in there, I call him cinnabon mode. Oh yeah. <laughs> so that that means like he's mad anxious and he wants affection from you. Oh yeah. Yeah. So if he's laying, it, does your dog ever like sleep on his back? Yeah, he does. He does. Okay. Yeah. That means he's like super brave. Like he's super feeling brave and like comfortable right there. And, there. Yeah. and if if he ever like sleeps on your clothes or like uses it as a blanket or comes up to your bed. Yo. Super comfortable. Like he loves you. Like this, yeah. that, that, you're like his soulmate. Anytime I leave a hoodie, like in the living room, yeah. he's always like sleeping on the oh, hoodie. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You have a good relationship with your dog. Then. All the time, all the time. Yeah. And since we left for the Bahamas, right? Mm -hmm. I think he got like um separation anxiety. Oh, you didn't bring him? No, bro, he can't bring the dog to the resort. Oh, really? Yeah, so we, we left him with our cousins at our cousin's house. Yeah. But he got anxiety man Fuck. and um what's it called so they sent us a video of the dogs playing yeah and you can see him he's, he's like, like he's he's having fun <laughs> but every two seconds what does he do what? turns his head tries to look at the door the front door are they no. coming back are they coming back yeah Damn. i swear i swear yeah it's sad those those are, I, those are the most wholesome vids when like you're gone for a long time and then your dog's waiting at the door did yeah he, yeah, did yeah. He run up to you like start barking and yeah, shit you like bark, that you just bark you pissed <laughs> This guy was pissed, though. No? Yeah, two two weeks is a long time, fam. <laughs> two weeks is a long Dude, time. Did you ever have a pet? Yeah, I had like a goldfish, but it was not like a serious. So you pet. never had like a bunny or like no. A but if hamster. I did, I always say to my mom like, I want a cat. Why cats? Because I'm such a laid back, 
low maintenance person that I feel like a cat is also low maintenance. Is, oh, it, is, true. It, is it true? I, I think it's less. Yeah. yeah I yeah. think it is less. Yeah. But cats, they're, they're scary, bro. No, that that's the best. Like, you can just chill with your cat fam. They're mad fluffy. They don't do a lot, you know? Well, some cats are fucking like, <laughs> I don't know, man. They, they just look menacing to me. True. I, I can I could see where they go. But there's some cool cats that look like, um, cool cats. There's some, <laughs> <laughs> there's some cool cats that look like, uh, uh like tigers and shit. Oh, I yeah. think that's dope. Mm-hmm, yeah. But I'm pretty sure those ones are the ones that'll like <laughs> slash your face and shit, oh, bro. Yeah. Facts. <laughs> but yeah, I don't think I could, I could like take care of a pet right now. There's too much shit going on in my I life. Have you ever got attacked by like an animal? No. Oh no no no! I haven't. From Never? your dog for whenever I come in, but <laughs> that's not attacked, man. That's, that's not attacked. Yeah, that's it. No, I haven't. You ever been to like um the safari shit? Oh wait, actually no. I we ha- we barely we almost got attacked. Yeah. Right, but you know when you're going through like so there was like a lions lions like walk through thing mm-hmm. where it's a big like well, well, I don't know what to call it like stadium like thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know like, what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah. So it's a safari. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's like a little little path, right? And you go with your jeep, mm-hmm. and you know it's bad when the tiger starts coming up to the jeep, and yeah. the person starts, oh shit, oh shit, like back up now, now, like get away, get away, <laughs> shit mm. like that. Like her voice was cracking, shit, like oh, what's going on here? What's going on here? But then it like jumped onto like the glass thing, but then it was like went away after. Oh, but that shit, I was like, oh fuck, we're we're in deep shit. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but that was like the closest thing I got to like a tiger. Yo. Did you ever, you know, you know, like Tiger King? You ever watch that? Tiger King? No. What's that? On Netflix. Yo, during the pandemic, everybody's watching this shit. Really? Tiger yeah, Tiger King? King, Tiger King. No, I haven't. So, um, so this is a statistic, a real statistic. Yeah, yeah. There's more tigers in North, in US than anywhere than in anywhere the world. Else? Oh, shit. Seven, I think 70% of the tigers in the world or yeah. 80%, something crazy uh-huh. are in the, in the US. Mm. In North America, man. That's fucked. They're not in like the wild where they came from, bro. They They're breed them roaming. and they have as, they have them as pets or put them in zoos or whatever. <laughs> and you know, like uh, you heard Carol Baskin, yeah, and, Carol. yeah, that, that name, <laughs> yeah. Okay. How, how like she she murdered her her uh, husband yeah, and yeah. fed it to the tigers. the tigers. Do you think that could be a real thing? Like, yes, I I believe in the Carol Baskin story. You believe like, in that, yeah, yes, yeah. Because she's like she's like the hillbilly mode. Like, what's the more hillbilly than feeding your dead husband to a tiger? Yo, yo, one of the scariest <laughs> shit I ever seen, bro. Uh-huh. There was this uh mafia boss that was on a podcast. Okay, and he said that one way, one method they use to get rid of a body, mm-hmm. they'll grind you up like super fine chunks, right? Yeah, and feed you to the pigs. What? Yeah, they'll feed you to pigs, bro. Yo, so there's no evidence. Yeah. There's some bug that we've all eaten, mm. like that people don't know we've eaten. I don't know what it's called. I think it's like, hold on, let me try and think of it. A spider? No, no, no. Hold on. <laughs> I, I gotta look it up. Hold on. <laughs> so, so it's the cock a needle beetle, right? So cock cock a needle? Cock a needle. <laughs> Yo, this guy's eating cock and needle beetles, no, bro. No, you ate it too. Yo, this guy's no, eating you cock and needle beetles, Every, man. No, everyone in the world has. <laughs> has yes. Oh shit, wrong one. Hey, Yo, hey. no, but the cock and needle beetle fam, they they it's um they take it from cactuses, yeah, and they grind it up, and in every red food, so licorice, the the red Gatorade, yeah. it's in that. So we've actually, oh, it's in that. Yeah, it's all in that. It's used for coloring. Yeah, no, I guess, I guess, in some way, but like you still eat a eating a bug. That's weird. What the yeah, fuck? Yeah, I know. Yo, do you think they ever weaponized bugs like that? Weaponized? What do you mean? Weaponized bugs. Like, imagine you could fucking RC a mosquito <laughs> with poison. That would be fire. And <laughs> put that shit on somebody. Yes, yes. The the wasps and shit. Remember that guy who does the YouTube video? Is like, oh, oh fuck that that bald guy. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, he's yeah, like, yeah. I, I'm this, and this is a sting from the the deadliest wasp in the. Oh wait, Stevo? No, 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 it's someone else. It's like no, the wilderness guy the too. Wilderness, yeah, yeah, I know yeah, what you're yeah. talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I don't know why the fuck you would do that, <laughs> bro. If you could do that and weaponize bugs like that, uh, yeah, you probably have the world at your <laughs> hands, man. Fam, imagine the mosquito, like you said, going into random people's houses. You just spy on someone, bro. Imagine you can like control it in VR too, you're, like oh, flying yeah. around it's, in VR with a headset. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, have you seen that TikTok? This is like, crazy. <laughs> have you seen that TikTok? I was like, put this on, put the VR set on, and you can get transported in the game. And then he puts it on, and then it shows like a clip of Angry Birds, and then like <laughs> <laughs> he's live in the air. <laughs> that shit's so gross. I'll man. put that shit up too, because they probably don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> no, I, I know exactly yeah. what you're talking about. <laughs> Angry Birds VR. Yeah. <laughs> But, but yeah, that's exactly what it's yeah, like, yeah. bro. That's exactly what it's like. 
I hope one day we come we come to the point where we can like live as animals, man. Just just like I don't know, put a consciousness into a fucking a bird or like a donkey or some shit, and you just see what it's like, man. That's fine. You know the the a random fact that I searched up. It was like the most disgusting animals is a giraffe. Why? Because before they mate with anyone, they swing their neck at like the female yeah. to make them pee, right? Oh, and then shit. they taste, they literally drink the pee. And if they like the pee, then they mate with them. Ew, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Ew, wait, what? They yeah. they drink their pee they, first? Like, they taste the pee to see if like, oh, this is like, she's, she's the one type shit. And then they, they start mating. So, so wait, you're telling me, you're telling me they taste it to see if like they like the flavor, then they're going to... Oh. Yeah, they, they they made them. What the hell? Yeah, that's that, that, that's that's real. That's an actual fact. What the? F- yeah. Yo, did you know? I learned this in Bahamas actually. Okay. Did you know? Um, sharks mm-hmm. they will get gang raped by by dolphins. What? Yeah, this is real. This is real. <laughs> okay. So, specifically, dolphins are one yeah. of the rapiest animals in the animal kingdom. Oh no. Yeah. Oh, no. And and also, what's crazy? Mm-hmm. Dolphins are one of the smartest animals oh, in the animal wow. kingdom. So they're taking advantage of them, man? <laughs> yeah, That's bro. Fun. And they roll in gangs, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I swear in every movie, like, dolphins, there's no one singular dolphin. There's no, yo, you won't catch a dolphin yeah. lacking, bro. <laughs> so actually, the most gangster animal uh-huh. ever in the world is a dolphin, bro. Really? I thought it would be a shark. Nah, sharks get beat up by That's dolphins. Fuck. They get they get gang raped, bro. Yeah, that, They get jumped. Yeah. <laughs> they get jumped in the water. Why, why isn't there more, like... There's no movie on like dolphins though. There's always like some shit about Jaws. There's no, there's nothing about dolphins. No, because dolphins look friendly, man. <laughs> yeah, they look soft and shit. Like when Ariel like spawns all the fish, there's always the dolphins jumping. Like, <laughs> you ever heard that thing? Um, it's like Fuba and and Ku Ku something. Okay, th- no. th- there's like two words, right? Mm-hmm. Fuck, I forgot exactly what it's called. Like Ku and Fuba or some mm-hmm. shit. Yeah, and everybody resembles like one or the other. Okay. So the the sound, I think the first sound starts with a like ku and then the other one's a f like uba. Okay, okay. Something ends with a uba, right? Okay, okay. And if you look at somebody's face, they might resemble like a like a rounder whatever. Yeah. And then another person may might represent like a sharper. Okay, okay. Yeah. Whatever, yeah, right? Yeah. So if you look at like a dolphin, yeah. a dolphin's kind of like the baby version of a of a shark. And if you look at, you know, Pokemon? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, Dragonite? Oh, <laughs> that's a perfect example. Yeah. So, so Charizard is like the, the like chiseled. The, yeah, like the <laughs> and, no. then, and then Dragonite's it's like, like the, the fucking, yeah, it's like the, the, the one with diabetes. Yeah. <laughs> bro, bro. So a lot, a lot of things in art, right? Mm-hmm. And especially this was in, um, you know, that book I put on my story, yeah. the principles of art. Yeah. So Kanye recommended this book, <laughs> okay, okay. but in one of the one of the laws and principles uh-huh. was exactly that a lot of things we see uh-huh. in in media or even just our everyday life in uh products mm-hmm. it either represents something soft and round or okay. it represents something very sharp and rigid mm. it's it's like two it's like two archetypes you'll yeah. see everywhere okay that's that's pretty cool and that's probably why our dynamic works because you're like the rigid you have a rigid face and i have like a really like yeah it's like, it's like the, the happy and then like yeah, the, yeah no, that's what i was getting at. i was getting yeah, at yeah. that i was getting at that because yeah. because it's like you need both you yeah. can't you can't have because if you have two if you have two charizards that's kind of yeah, wild that's wild exactly that's what exactly I, I think that's you what i mean why, that's, that's why we work because whenever i think about it it's like can carlos have a po- co- uh, podcast with another carlos nah and, it and wouldn't you work seen it you kind of seen it in other guests mm-hmm. like nah it kind of doesn't work because they're both kind of spitting fact it gets boring yeah yeah, yeah. but i kind of like we i don't know it's, it's funny just our dynamic i guess yeah it, it's it's a it's a good it's a good match when it's yeah. like too different yeah you know i know the yin and the yang yeah because like, if, if you have too much of the same then it's like um yeah. i don't know yeah it doesn't work that's why a lot of best friends like you you can see a girl best friend would have a, another best friend that equals it out and this kind of this kind of weird but uh it's there's like a the saying that a pretty best friend can't have like a has to have like a merc best friend too there's no two pretty best friends like the, the phrase goes yeah because like they're too egotistical and they're like they're, they're gonna hate each other at one day but that the the merc friend like calms the pretty uh, pretty girl's friend's ego down mm. that's why that's why it works is that like a theory no nah, it's not like a theory it's like like it makes sense I, I don't i don't know bro like, you put a bunch of pretty girls in one room they're all going oh judgmental shit like that then you p- so you think a pretty girl surrounds herself with with uglier girls than her? 
No, I'm not saying that, but like, if that works, like, hmm, <laughs> what do you think? I don't know. I don't. Know. I think. I think there's definitely some people that that put themselves with certain people because of that reason, where they want to be seen as this, mm-hmm. and then the others they don't like, you know, outshine yeah. or blah blah. True. But I think it takes a certain person to be like, nah, they can't. They can't. They can't look like this around me. They can't look yeah. like you can't look like that around. You can't match blah blah True. whatever. Yeah, yeah. But it takes a certain person to do that. Mm, that's what I'm saying. It's hard. Maybe in high school, like on on some mean girl shit, oh, like yeah. you're saying. Yeah, but maybe if once you mature out of that, then you can accept it. But yeah, you, but usually that's how it works out. That's why this, the whole TikTok thing is like there can never be two pretty best friends. There can never be two pretty. Be- oh yeah, that was the thing. Yeah, that, yeah. That's, that's a whole saying. That's why. Mm. Yeah, I think it's possible, bro. I think it's possible. I'm gonna just do you, okay off the top of your head. Do you know two pretty best? Yeah. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> really? You don't? I, I no no, I don't know. I actually do, I actually do. And whenever there is two, I've whenever there is two, I've always heard that they've they've fought in. Cause they probably have the same type of uh, of a guy and they're like, Oh, I like him, oh I like him, shit like that. And that's how it happens. You know what? Mm. Okay, I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say this. Mm-hmm. I think I think it's just the fact of you have to compare. Yeah then it becomes they can't be too pretty mm-hmm. but in my sense maybe because i look at it like they're both pretty yeah then they're both pretty but people love to compare yeah i know right true that's true i think that's i think that's what it is yeah. no matter what if you put like uh let's say I, I give you like dark chocolate milk chocolate and vanilla flavor like you yeah. try different types you're gonna you're gonna tell me which ones are your favorite yeah yeah i guess it is all opinionated <laughs> excuse me <laughs> your allergies <laughs> acting up yeah allergies. yo do you does your dad like sneeze super loud oh yeah my dad like, yells yeah, yells yeah, and my mom too both of them is it an asian thing or is it just like an ethnical thing <laughs> no i think the older you get the louder your sneezes become really yeah because i think i think as as young as i remember <laughs> i was trying to like sneeze as loud as i can because it feels better really that shit feels good man oh yeah if you scream it out that shit yeah. feels good i know that's just no that's like an orgasm <laughs> that, that's what people call sneezes, sneezes. like th- like that's a, that's your nose's orgasm i heard i heard if you if you hold in the sneeze is really bad it's really bad it's super bad like it, it like shocks your brain or something yeah it like yeah. rumbles it yeah, yeah. <laughs> rumbling and, and then uh, the trick is like you just say pineapples pineapples real quick and then you won't sneeze again that's some bullshit no, I, pineapples well, whenever you're gonna sneeze again probably so when you do it just say pineapples in your head and you're not gonna sneeze is that what you do yeah because your brain puts it in another like you you don't think about sneezing no more you're thinking about something else so pineapples isn't the part of the brain that like stops your <laughs> yeah. sneeze yeah or like any word like you can say like apples too just say say a random word i don't know is that true yes it always works for me that's how i always think interesting like whenever you have a headache right yeah the number one thing i do is like because i i seen it on a youtube video you have to really focus on where your head when your headache is and then you you think where what shape does it make and then you say what what color is it to you mm. and then you're thinking so hard that the headache just goes away Okay, I'm gonna sound kind of crazy here. Okay. I'm gonna just say it though. I feel like sometimes when I think too hard about that stuff, uh-huh. I start to like, like see things, bro. <laughs> well, see, I don't want. I don't want to sound crazy. <laughs> so like, when you, I'm not trying to sound crazy, but so like, when you have a migraine. You you think so hard that oh fuck, there's an elf right there. No, 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 no. Okay, I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say this. So so I really I really don't think it's anything serious. But sometimes I'll be looking at like um let's say let's say a pattern on on those carpets that have like random <laughs> shapes and shit, right? Yeah. So if I focus too hard on oh that looks like a face, yeah, then all of a sudden like the face gets more features, mm, okay. and then the face has like is surrounded by other things I can point out. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know is that is that me me falling into like a for sure like a hallucination or is that okay. just me like seeing things that are I, I don't think that's hallucination i think just because you're so visual you see stuff different than others that's kind of scary bro like i know that's good though now nah, i get scared sometimes man <laughs> like, like, i'm not gonna lie to you i get scared sometimes like, that, can, that can work as as your advantage because if we're in like an escape room yeah boom you see stuff different you know how to escape because you see that that little shape on the wall oh it's a triangle when yeah. everyone else doesn't mm true true you know? true yo okay there's a story i want to tell you okay it's a crazy story okay, okay okay so you ever heard about elisa lamb no what's that elisa lamb you ever no. heard about her no who's that so there's like it's kind of unsolved mystery right oh, okay no this is this is an unsolved mystery where this girl yeah she ended up in like 
a tank of water and nobody knows how she got there. What the fuck? How? So listen, listen, listen. So Alisa Lam, she checked into, I think it's called the Cecil Hotel. Mm. And she stayed in like a hostel room. You know what a hostel is? No, what's that? So a hostel is like you share it with other people, like strangers in okay. the room. Okay. And the the concierge, one night they got a call. Mm -hmm. Ring, 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 pick it up. And it's Alisa. Mm -hmm. She says, hey, could, could I get um a different room? Because there's somebody in the room that's that's like kind of bothering me. Yeah, yeah. Right? She's like, okay, okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, we, we can hook you up with a room, like a proper room. Mm -hmm. Boom. Hangs up. So she gets moved out of the hostel and gets moved into like an actual hotel room. Okay. Okay. Now this is where it gets crazy. Yeah. So the last sighting of Elisa before they found her body uh -huh. was her on the elevator. What? Her on the elevator. And there's footage of her. Yeah. I'm going to show you the footage too. No. But there's footage of her. She's like, she's like guiding somebody like, come here, come here, come yeah, here, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. She's like really anxious. She's like in the corner of the, the elevator, Holy very shit. worried the whole time. Hold yeah. on, I'm going to show you. Okay. There's actual video proof? Yes. What the fuck? So this is the last sighting of her. Mm -hmm. this, this is all they remember. Or this is all they have on it. Yeah. So look, so she enters, she enters the elevator uh -huh. by herself. Yeah. And she's like trying to press. She takes a long time pressing the buttons. You see that? Okay, yeah. Why do, you, why do you think she's taking so long, right? Now, look, she's standing, she's standing, and she does some weird stuff, bro. Look at this. Hold on. She's, like, she's like looking oh, around. Okay, yeah, she's looking around, that's right? That's sauce. That's sauce. I'm going to fast forward a little bit okay, okay. just so you can see. She's yeah. hiding. See? She's hiding in the corner. <laughs> yeah. She's looking around. She's like, she's scared, right? Uh-huh. Look, look. She's still pressing the buttons and shit and nothing's nothing's, nothing's happening. Yeah, yeah. If she's pressing the buttons, wouldn't the elevator go up? Yeah, yeah. Oh no. So look, look, she's guiding. See her hand? She's like moving, come in, come in, come in, right? What the f nothing nobody's there. Yeah. Nobody's there. Okay. Yeah. So there's two theories okay. about what happened to her. Okay. Now the first theory mm -hmm. is she was on and off her depression medication mm, so she's seen and, stuff and people think that maybe she was hallucinating and she was she's going through something and she's yeah. just pretending like this whole scenario is happening right yeah yeah but uh -huh. there's a crazier theory what that she played the elevator game what's that you ever What's heard about this? Bro. Okay, first of all, I'm already scared of elevator. <laughs> now I'm going to have this shit in my head. Listen, listen, listen. Uh -huh. So the elevator game, this is a real like spiritual game. I think it, it originated in Korea. Okay. And what happens is it's a gateway to enter a different dimension. Yeah. So listen, to so the way you play, uh -huh. you walk into the elevator. Yeah. You're supposed to press a combination of floors mm -hmm. before it will take you to the new dimension. No. So I think you press two first, you yeah. go to floor two. Then when you're on floor two, you press four, six, then you pre press floor four. Uh -huh. And then you go to floor five. Yeah. Now when you go to floor five, what happens? A woman might come in. Okay. Right now what the rules are, you should never look at the woman because if you look at the woman, uh -huh. you might get stuck in this dimension, Fuck. right? So yeah. if she walks in, she might even try to talk to you and get your attention like, hey, can you help me? Can you help me? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should always ignore her uh -huh. or else your soul will be trapped there. Now, it will take you to floor 10, Yeah. right? Now, floor 10 is the supposed alternate dimension this will take okay. you to a different universe okay right now when you enter floor 10 what people say they saw mm -hmm. is a red cross in the sky outside of the windows what the f so the the way you know you're in this dimension yeah is when you only see yourself like nobody else is in there yeah, yeah it's yeah. empty completely empty mm -hmm. the only person that's there is the woman that's in the elevator with you oh right my goodness. now once you get to that floor, mm -hmm. you're not supposed to touch anything. Yeah. You're not supposed to interact with anything. Mm -hmm. And especially don't interact with that woman yeah. because she will take your soul. What? Yeah. So take this in, right? Uh -huh. So what happens is if, 
if you talk to her or do something with her, yeah. she'll take you to like a different floor and you're trapped forever and you can't get back. Now, if you want to get back, right? Uh, yeah. You have to do a certain combination to get back right away. <sighs> Fuck. Yeah. So the whole theory is uh -huh. that she was playing this game. Why though? She was playing this game. Yeah. Now, take this in. Uh huh. A lot of people didn't know she was actually a blogger. Oh, this is why. <laughs> she was a blogger. Oh, okay, yeah. So she went out to do ex explorations. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> explorations. And okay. the Cecil Hotel mm -hmm. is it's, actually- It's already mad haunted. It's known for hauntings, yeah. <laughs> bro. Yeah, yeah. It's known for hauntings. Yeah. So take this in. So she did all this stuff, right? And uh -huh. people said she's not the type to go and kill herself. Mm -hmm. Like she wouldn't do that. She's just a mad positive person. Yeah, but mm. ended up happening. The, the, um, the hotel workers- found her in the roof on the 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 tank of water nah. you know the the boiler water yeah found her inside of the tank just her body floating oh my goodness so that that's the theory is yeah. she might have played this game and her physical self may have not known where she was going where she was going but her her spiritual self was doing all of these different things. Oh so in the video, that's when why you see like, her like talking, yeah, pressing so many, why is she pressing the button so much, bro? Yeah. Cause she's like trying to escape type shit. She's trying to escape. <laughs> the whole time I was like, yo, 10K likes me do this, but fuck that shit. No, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, like a lot of people did this. Listen, you oh, can go on YouTube, this? you can go on YouTube and, and hear stories of people that actually did it. Yeah. And everybody will tell you not to do it. Oh, okay. Because but, but you could really out, get lost. But they've gotten out. Some people got out. <laughs> oh shit. Oh, <laughs> some shit. people got and some people will tell you like they could have got stuck. No, but is this only like a Cecil Hotel thing or is it like cause it, if I do that at like the Marriott, that shit probably I think happen. I think there's something about the Cecil Hotel that made certain things happen, like paranormal experiences happen yeah, yeah. because that energy there. Okay. But it's called the elevator game where you can play it with any elevator. I think you have to have 10 floors. That's like the requirement. Okay. That's, that's scary, bro. Yeah. A oh. combination yeah. that will take you to that. Yeah. And just pe bare people disappearing. Just that just sounds it. like a movie, man. I know. It Somebody is. make that. Is it? No, no, no. It should be. It no, should I said be. like it is. Like that shit is a movie, bro. Because yeah. how how are you getting teleported to different floors? It's like different levels of a boss, and mm -hmm. then you see a Batman logo. <laughs> no, it's a cross. Yeah, I know. Like, but it's like the bat. You know how the Batman has a sign in there? Yeah, air? yeah, yeah. It's like, nah, you're That's dead. so weird, bro. Yeah. So so it's supposed to be a cross, and then red light. Yeah. Just in the middle of the sky. Yeah, like y'all, you're dead. You're man. dead. That's just yeah. weird. Have we have we ever talked about um skinwalkers? Skinwalkers, I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think we you, ever you talked know, about you, that. But you, you brought it up a, a bunch of times. I think I brought it up before, but I never like dived yeah. into it. But then I, I looked up and like in the US, there's actually like certain uh, like, what do you call it? Stories about skinwalkers. Yeah. And how in certain forests, like people, they disguise themselves as people because they can't hear. They can't. I mean, they can hear, but they can't speak. Right. Mm. So they only learn the words of the people that right before they kill them and take them, what they're saying. Oh, shit. So the, the, usually the last words that people say is, help me, help me. Yeah. So that's how they attract people, fam. So the only words they know is, help me, help me. So if you see a person in a forest yeah, yeah, yeah. screaming, help me, help me, where are you going to go? Oh. To them. And once you go to them, yeah. boom, they got you already. Damn. Wait, where in the world does this happen? Do you know? The US. I don't know. The US, but like in certain forests. In like but, North America yeah, specifically. Yeah, North America specifically. Yo. Like there's skinwalkers and shit like that. I think there's there's been like um cults and shit that live in the forest and like really oh, yeah. random secluded areas. Yeah, yeah. So what if like these skinwalkers are just those people? Really? Yeah. You ever you ever watch that movie, uh, The Hills Have Eyes? No, that just sounds scary. Is that a horror movie? It's, it's yeah, it's like a horror movie. Okay, it, yeah. It's a very old movie, but they, they did like remakes of it. Mm -hmm. I really hope they, they revamp it and bring it back because this is a really interesting concept where yeah. they were they were in the desert. Mm -hmm. Like this family lived in the desert in an RV. Okay. And what happened was they were near a nuclear testing site. Oh, just like Pickering. <laughs> yeah, a nuclear testing site where yeah. they would test nuclear bombs. Mm -hmm. And the radiation and them doing incest or whatever mm -hmm. made them into these monsters that they are. Mm -hmm. And they're cannibals. Oh yeah, fuck that. They're cannibals because the only thing that they could find around there yeah. are like what the the couple, the couple rabbits, whatever they can find, birds, mm -hmm. but tourists. Yeah, tourists that they could eat. Yeah, for real. 
Did you see? Did you see that? I think it was Anthony Bourdain. But you know how he goes to different countries and sees what they eat. Yeah, yeah. So I think I think you you've seen this before. But they were in a circle with like a guy with a neck, like the leader of that like tribe. Mm. And he he started like chewing on. Oh no, that wasn't Anthony Bourdain. That was, was somebody, somebody else. Was some yeah. other white guy. Yeah, somebody but else. He started chewing on himself, and like the guy was like, "I'm not gonna eat that." When he put like some guy's like I guess leg or some shit on, yeah, his, yeah. Uh, he's like, "No, I'm not gonna eat that." He got super mad. Those are the headhunters. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the cameraman was like, "Yo, bro, I think it's time to go. Like, you should eat it, fam, or else we're gonna go, bro." Like, cause that's disrespectful in the tribe if you don't eat what they're what they're giving you. Yo, that's messed up, man. Yeah. Cause, cause I think about it. I think about it like this: It's like, if if you're forced to do something like that, yeah. and it's your only means of survival, yeah, you gotta do that, and then you gotta live with that decision for yeah. the rest of your life, bro. Yeah. I know, but like, you can take it on a smaller scale. Like, oh, you are prepping your girlfriend to eat for like Filipino food, like fam, whatever is put in front of you, you gotta eat. So my parents like you. Type oh, shit. true. <laughs> like, you Would you do that? Yeah, you would do that. Like it's, it's a sign of respect. I feel like for me, if, if a girl doesn't even want to like try, oh yeah, then, then that's, that's a red flag yeah, to me. Exactly, exactly. That's a red flag to me. I don't think I would ever do like a a prep thing though. Yeah, I, I feel like it's like natural. But I remember seeing the, like this videos like, oh yo, the, uh, we have like stuffed intestines. Whatever is put in front of you, you better fucking eat it, because <laughs> it's that weird, you know. Yeah. So sometimes you need a prep. I don't think Filipino food's that weird though. It's not. It's not. I don't think so. Especially, especially if you just get like the the meats, the normal shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not that. Maybe, that, maybe crazy. that that's a good test, like to test your girl, like uh, just bring the most exotic food. <laughs> maybe I think I think a good test would be like Korean barbecue, just because. Korean just bar everyone loves. Korean no, no, barbecue. just because you know all the sides they bring. Oh, like the weird, ah, mm, like the, yeah, exactly. like the, the kimchi. Exactly. The, okay. That's a good test. That's a good <laughs> test, I think. All the pickled stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's I don't think that's test. bad to me just because I'm a foodie, but maybe, yeah, to a picky eater. Yeah, for a picky eater, I remember the first time I went to Korean barbecue, dead ass first time yeah. I went to Korean barbecue, I'm like, what is all this stuff? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, and it's a lot of it. Too. Yeah, it's a lot. I'm like, whoa, it, it, do we have to mix this together? <laughs> like, how do I yeah, eat this, yeah, right? Yeah. So I think that's a good test is just like bring them bring them Korean barbecue low key. What 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 else would be a good food spot to to test? First date? Hmm. Definitely not no burgers, no pizza. It's gotta well, be I like, like that. I like that. Since I'm a low maintenance person, I wanna see I wanna see your wild, like I wanna see the side that you don't show me right away so I can just like be comfortable. With with burgers and yeah, because fam, Korean barbecue is shit uh shit first date because you guys are so hungry, you guys are so hungry, grilling, like you guys are eating all the time. You don't know when to speak. I don't know. It's hard. It's hard. So something that, that you can eat like real quick and still talk, but like, oh, you're so busy on on cooking it and then you're so worried. Is this cooked? Is this cooked? Hmm. Bring it back. You got a lot. If you, if you can multitask, yeah, you can obviously have that shit. But for the people that can't multitask. I think I think that's a good one though because just because like, there's so many things you can you can <laughs> to do. Yeah, you can like you can place the meat and then talk. You can move that meat and then talk. You know? Okay, maybe it's different because when I go out to Korean barbecue, I'm just focused on that shit. Oh, you like task at hand? Yeah, task at hand. <laughs> okay, I guess I guess you could only if you multitask yeah, like that. Yeah. Only if you multitask. Maybe some shit like um uh the boiling crab with like seafood boil where you yeah. have like the little things on and then you eat. Mm -hmm. I'll see if you really like. <laughs> Are you the type to put something on while you play video games? Oh yeah, hundred. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. music. Mm -hmm. Yeah, music will be in my ear, hundred percent. I remember the first time I ever saw somebody like multitask crazy was yeah, yeah. Denzel, man. Really? So I went over to his house okay. one time, and then I just see on his on his TV he has like anime playing, right? Yeah. yeah. And then another monitor, he's gaming. Yeah. And then on his iPad, really? he's got like a YouTube video playing, oh, bro. All goodness. at the same time, really? man. Really? Yeah. <laughs> there's there's an actual theory that people who play video games yeah. live longer. Why? Because they, they, they ran a test on this, right? And the people that are really old, mm -hmm. you, you usually like lose lose their, their like their brain. Like they don't they don't remember. Oh, I believe that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So people who played video games longer when they're old, their cognitive skills are still there. They're mm. still intact because of video games. And this is crazy because um they also ran a study. So before a big college test, yeah. So there was two, the room was split in half. So people that have played uh the the game portal mm -hmm. for eight hours straight before the test and people who have studied yeah, yeah. before the test and the people that played portal mm. the grades were 80 percent above the people that that did academic studies because because they're training their mind their or at mind, least they're yeah. opening their mind exactly that's just like um there's this app fuck mm -hmm. i don't want to put on the app i'm not gonna say the name <laughs> okay i'll blur it out <laughs> yeah say it, I'll blur it out. I, I think it's um 
I forgot the exact name anyway. Okay, yeah. But it's this app and it, it makes you play like um brain games. Do you okay. remember uh Big Brain Academy mm -hmm. on the DS? Yep, yep. It's kind of like that. It's kind of yep, like that. that game. So every day it will give you like a memory game, mm -hmm. um, a cognitive game, and then like a creative game, blah blah mm -hmm. blah, right? Yeah. So I used to do it and then every morning I started feeling like super sharp. Yeah. Super sharp. Mm -hmm. Just because I got used to moving my brain moving. in those ways. Yeah. yeah. And I heard this thing too, if you wake up, right? Okay. The first minute, I think first five minutes of your, your morning yeah. are the most important of yep. your day. Yep. Just because it will determine how you're feeling the rest. Yeah, yeah. So if you do something super <laughs> motivating, super uh -huh. inspiring, then you'll be inspired the rest of the day. But if yeah. you stay in bed, that's why whenever you go to sleep, you wake up and then you feel tired again, you go back to sleep, you feel like shit yeah, when yeah, you wake yeah. up, right? Yeah, yeah, facts. And like, that's why like, I, I used to go on my phone first thing in the morning, but mm. boom, social media already. Oh, I'm judgmental. This is gonna be oh, like- Oh, yeah, that. yeah, why, yeah. That's why it's become a habit why I'm so like judgmental, just cause first thing I wake up- You look at Instagram? Instagram, you know? Oh. You feel me? So what should I do? What, what should what's, you do? What's like a good thing to do? I heard, I heard the best thing to do is make your bed. Okay, yeah, I, I do that, but like that's after social media. No, 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 but in the military, the uh -huh. reason they actually make everybody make their bed is for that discipline. Discipline stuff, yeah. Is the, is the discipline and the mm -hmm. sense of accomplishment. Because yeah. if you accomplish something, you'll be, you'll be more motivated to, to take on tasks. True. Right? Because look, if I give you, if I give you a, a huge essay, mm -hmm. I give you a huge essay, yeah. pop it down on your table, right? Yeah. And like, okay, start. Uh-huh. But what if I warm you up first? And uh -huh. I'd be like, oh, can you, um, can you just fill out this quick, Submission form. Mm -hmm. Submission form, boom. Now you're in that mood to yeah. continue writing. True. So you're you're ready to take on that task. Yeah. So I feel like that sense of warm up uh -huh. is a real thing. Mm, true. Yeah, I know. Okay, so this is what I always say. So before you go on like social events, yeah. what do you do to prepare your like your social battery? Do you like cause some people I've I've asked and they're like, I just take a nap. But for mm. me it's different. I need to be talking to someone to warm it up. Really? Yeah. So like before I call to you, that's why I talk by myself. But like for, for like a date or something, yeah. I'll call my boy up and be like, yo, like, yo, what's up? Like what's happening? Get mm. me ready. Get me ready. I think I'm the opposite. What do you do? I think I get tired if I talk too much. I have a high social battery. Yeah? Yeah. I think I get tired or at least I don't want to have conversations no more just because I've been doing it too much. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just me. So, so I'm the opposite where... Before I used to go to parties, this is what I used to do. Okay. Lie down on my bed, <laughs> yeah. chest up like this, and then just like daydream. Daydream? Daydream. Deadass, that's what I used to do. Really? Deadass, yeah. I don't know. Before parties, I'm like, I'm so hyper. Like, I gotta, I gotta fucking, you know? Do you ever hear that theory where, or like, it was my teacher that said this theory okay. where the loud people in class are quiet at home. Oh, no, I never heard that before. And the quiet people in class are loud at home. Quiet people. No, I, I've never heard. You never that. heard that. I don't, so, I don't believe it's that's true. I think it's true. At least it's true for me. Okay. Where where I could be loud in one place, but because I was loud there, I want to be quiet there. Oh, okay, okay. Because I'm like I'm like exhausted. Yeah. You know why I'm like that? Because everything I do, I just put like my full <laughs> my full fucking uh, throttle. Yeah. <laughs> Am I wrong though? No, you're true. That's right. <laughs> you know, I never I never like um save energy yeah. or stamina. Yeah, I'm just like true. full throttle. So so if if I told you, yo, let's run three or like four podcasts this day, you couldn't do it. I could probably do it. Yeah. I could probably do it. But, but like you can see in every podcast, you can see the decrease. Yeah, yeah you'll probably see the decrease. But yeah. that's everybody. If you get tired, you get tired. No. That's what it yeah. is. And that's just not with me. You can look at every video that I put out on the channel. Yeah. I don't think every anyone's like, it's just me just chilling. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I'm always just high energy. True. Well, I'm, I'm never let down on the podcast just because I, I save time for that. Yeah. You know, True. I never, I never like, oh, um, I don't know where. Okay, let's just do it. <laughs> yeah. No, actually, I do that too, though. I do that too. <laughs> okay. Where? <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong. This guy caught himself. Fuck, I don't know. <laughs> just watch the videos back. You'll see. Yeah. I don't know, bro. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll feel lazy. Mm -hmm. And then that, those are the times I'm like, okay, let me take a break today. Yeah, yeah. But this is one technique I used to do, especially with working out. Okay. I think I told you this before, right? No. I'll work out every single day and I don't have a specific rest day. But the day I get tired, yeah. I make that my rest day. Oh, really? Yeah. So yeah. so it's kind of like um, I can no longer do it 
Uh huh. That's the rest because I can literally no <laughs> longer like, do it. Okay, okay. Yeah, no, me, it's just like whenever I feel tired and lazy, I'll just, I'll just not go. Mm. And then I'll put on the Joe Rogan motivational shit. Yeah. It's like, oh, if you have five minutes in your day, you can definitely work out. <laughs> and then I'll get my ass up and work That's out. That's true. That's some yeah, real no, shit. That's facts. That's facts. But I think. Yeah, when 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 you work out right away, yeah, you get that um the euphoria. No, yeah, the, yeah. The, the euphoria after you work out is the best feeling ever. Mm-hmm. It's like, damn, I actually just did that shit. And I think just dressing up too, like put on like some shorts, put yeah. on some athlete, a leisure, a yeah. leisure. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're getting that mood. <laughs> you know, you know, I don't, I don't think you do this because I don't think you dress up like that crazy. Mm-hmm. But I put on a crazy fit, and I'm feeling myself in the mirror. And yeah. then the worst moments is when like your mom knocks on your door to talk to you, and you have like this crazy ass Instagram outfit on, <laughs> and you have to open the door and say like, "What the fuck are you wearing?" <laughs> you get that? You probably don't. I kind of got that. You remember when I was doing those pictures? Which pictures? The oh, pictures from my birthday. Right <laughs> yeah, like, I think it was just funny. It was just funny to me because I was wearing like so many different yeah. outfits. So if my mom or dad came downstairs, so like you changed what again, you changed again, <laughs> dog. I had twenty two outfits, bro. That's facts. That was that was just weird to me. Yeah, yeah. But I, the the only thing that was, that was wrong with that, bro, I wasted a lot of clothes. I I hate that too. I hate like I'm wasting clothes, bro. That if you look at my room, that's why I have like clothes lying around because I want to wear it again and not wash it right the, away. The, the fact that you had twenty two different outfits for specific jobs was like, <laughs> did you? Ha- and you probably didn't go out to like buy these these like. No, clothes. I just had them. Yeah, you just had I them. Just had them. Fuck? Like who does that? I just have them, bro. Yeah. That's why I have so many different moods, man. Yeah, like. Sometimes I'm feeling this style. Sometimes yeah, no, I'm feeling you know, this style. you know why you have that? Cause like I remember I was seeing a thing. It was like specific music can see your personality too, and mm. you ha- you listen to everything. Oh so, shit! So rock, you're you're mad violent. Yeah. But yeah. then you're an you can listen to indie too. You're mad creative, mm. and then you listen to pop. You're an entertainer. Yo, that's actually like, kind of true. Everything, everything. So you can switch. Damn, that's kind of true. Yeah, me, me. It's like I I don't even listen to indie, so I don't believe in that because mm. like. I'm mad creative, like in itself, mm-hmm. but yeah, I'm an entertainer. No, I don't think it's it's necessarily that that um that skill or whatever. Mm-hmm. I think it's just the vibe, I guess. Mm-hmm. You know, because sometimes you want to feel. I'm a very like um put myself in their shoes person. Yeah, yeah. So if I'm watching a movie, like for example, I know a lot of people can relate to this. Batman, y'all yeah. watch Batman, you want to mm-hmm. feel like oh I'm. Uh, yeah. I'm the Dark Knight. <laughs> you know what I mean, where is she? <laughs> you know yeah, yeah. that type of shit. True. So you feel like that leaving the leaving the the what do you call it the mm. theater? Yeah. And anytime I watch it, like if I watch Deadpool, I wanna be like him a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like the so that's why you. I have so many different like fits because I wanna feel like these movie characters. Oh, true. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm more specific niche, so I, I don't change a lot, but I'm like more focused on that. Mm-hmm. Do, do you have a theory about Batman to end it off? A theory about Batman? To go viral? Because <laughs> that's new. So everyone's going to want a theory. Mm, I actually might. Let me think. Okay, okay. I think I heard one like a long time ago. Bad, bad, bad. Mm, theory about Batman? Oh, this is for this is for the old Batman though. Okay, okay. So you know the Joker? Um, mm. Heath Ledger's Joker? Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so in the Dark Knight specifically when the Joker was in it. Yeah. So there's the theory that the reason the Joker is who he is. Yeah. Is because... He suffers from PTSD and he was a, a war vet. I, I could see that. I could see that. Right? That makes sense. So not only... um, Because he had other scars. He didn't just have uh, mm-hmm. his scars on his mouth. Yeah. He had scars on his face and his arms and shit too, yeah. right? Now, the theory goes that... You know how that one scene in The Dark Knight where the Joker, he was hiding with all the military people. Oh, yeah, Remember yeah. that? When they had the parade and then yeah, they're like yeah. moving, they're, they're moving the rifles, they're doing the drills and shit. Yeah, yeah. So he was moving those shit around like he knew what to do. Mm, yeah. So there's a theory that he became who he was yeah. because of the PTSD that he had. Yeah. Because you can't just become a gunslinger just like Yeah, that. yeah. And and mm-hmm. he was sick with explosives and shit too. Oh, yeah. How how did he know all how this stuff, right? How did yeah. he know? And he's very strategic. Mm-hmm. And remember in the first, the first scene of the movie, yep. he was like calling the shots when they're robbing the bank. Like, mm-hmm. okay, this move, then this move, then this move. Yeah. Bro, this guy, he that's like a military mindset. Yeah, that's facts. You know, you know the guy who makes like the art, or like there's there's a guy who makes art where he dis- deforms his face, like he puts lots of clay on his face mm. and he turns into somebody else, and then he takes a knife 
and slashes like the clay on his face, and then it, there's blood dripping. Oh, what the hell? I'll show you yeah, the video. Yeah. It's so fucked. It's so fucked. But I guess that's modern art now. Like anything can anything become is mo- anything like, is modern art, bro. Art now. It's anything fun. is art. Yeah, <laughs> you can you can make this stick right here. I'm gonna like <laughs> break it. Oh, it's like, <laughs> this is art. Why is it art? Because. <laughs> because, because. <laughs> That's all you need, y'all. That's Sold all you need. for $2,000. Yeah. <laughs> all right, we'll yeah. end it there. Thank you, everyone, for watching this episode yes, of Jumper Zone Podcast. Make sure to comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, follow us on Instagram. Make sure to listen on Apple, Spotify, all that. And, yeah, that's it. Jumper Zone out. Deuces.